You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of When Stars Fall. So y'all, I am sure y'all have heard by now, or you probably haven't, that uh, When Stars Fall has been officially cancelled. Now, I'm still going to cover the game, because I really like it so far, so whatever content is here, I'm going to cover. So, this is an incomplete game, it's going to be an incomplete run, but it'll at least allow us to see what the uh, all, what the uh, creators had in mind when they were making this. So, I'm going to go ahead and still show it off. But anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> this is really strange. Although, seeing some of the numbers it gives me, I don't know if I'm more impressed or disappointed in myself. I looked up from my pal, and apparently all the commotion had drawn a small crowd in the office. Um, thanks for the help. I should probably get my, get it, go get my dorm assignment. The elven woman cleared her throat, and when the crowd began going back to what they were doing. Right, you're all registered, and you should be able to get your dorm assigned, as well as start your spiritualist courses in the morning. I waved goodbye and headed back to the main hall. As I walked, as I, walked I opened my pal and looked at the time and little clock I had noticed earlier. It's already getting pretty late. I probably missed dinner if there's some more students go for it. I'll have to figure out where to get food. Huh. That seemed easier than I thought. I could have sworn there were more turns. I retraced my steps from the tour and headed to the dorm rooms with no trouble at all. I don't see Professor Crom anywhere. Oh, Office Woman said I had con I had contacts in my pal already. I wonder if Professor Crom is one. I pressed the gym and used my finger to navigate the screen looking for Professor Crom's contact. Hey, he is in here. I clicked the small button that said message. Another screen popped up where I could type something to hint something to send him. It was strange. I recognized all the symbols and letters on the screen. I hadn't given any thought before the before to the fact that I could read the screen. I wrote a short message asking where he was and letting him know that I was fully registered now. I waited for a few I waited a few minutes before his response came, and there was a small beep from my pal, and the gym gently pulsated with a blue glow. Neat. That's great news, kid. I was just about to grab a shower in the dorm showers down the hall. I'll be back at the dorms in about half an hour to get you assigned to your room. Ah, I guess it was a little too hopeful to think he'd wait around for me to finish registering. My pal beeped and flashed again. Oh, you could come join me and we can work out all the details together sooner. That's very forward. Should I really take him up on that offer? No, Silas is your man this run, you naughty, naughty man. As much as I wanted to satiate my curiosity, it was probably best that I didn't get too intimate with the teacher on my first day here. I sent him a quick message back. Thanks for the offer, but I think I'll sit this one out. Ha! I was just yanking your leg anyway. I won't keep you waiting too long. I put my pal in my pocket and then slid to the floor with my back against the wall and waited for Crom to finish. About 20 minutes later, Crom came into view at the end of the hallway. Sorry to keep you waiting. Let's get you settled into your new place. Hey, yeah, you actually lucked out. There was only one dorm left with a vacancy, and you won't even have a roommate. Follow me, and I'll take you there. I got up from the floor and followed him. My dorm, my new dorm, wasn't too far where he was. wasn't too far from where we started. And Crom stopped in front of a dark wooden door with a bronze plate that had the number 15 etched into it. Here it is. Go ahead and use your pal to unlock the door and go in. Just hold it up to the handle, and I'll do the rest. I did as he said. There was a small click, and I could turn the handle. I pushed the door open and stepped in. Welcome to your new living quarters. The room was plainly furnished and a bit small, but it had a bed. But it had a bed, a desk, and a dresser, which is uh, which I suppose was all I would really need. It ain't much, but I'll get you through. It'll get you through the through the year. I glanced over at the desk and saw a tray of food waiting on it. Figured you figured you probably didn't have time to grab anything to eat, so I grabbed something from the mess hall for you while you were uh, while you were registering. Thank you very much. My stomach grumbled, and Crom took that as his cue to see himself out. It's getting late. You should eat and then get some sleep. The first day of classes are brutal. With that, he left my room and closed the door behind him. I didn't waste my time going over to the plate of food and digging in. It was slightly cold, but it was still very good. I wasn't quite sure what some of the things on the plates were, but they were but they were colorful, smelled good, and I was hungry. After I finished eating, I cleaned up the space as best I could. That's what I can do with the tray tomorrow. I yawned and headed over to the bed. After stripping down, I slid under the covers and relaxed. Man, so much is happening lately. So many questions, and very and every time I think I find an answer, I think it just leads to even more questions. At least I've met some cool people here. Well, mostly. My eyelids began to droop as I struggled in vain to stay awake. Second, y'all, it is coffee time. Uh, my partner and I have work today, so that's what we'll be doing for most of the day. 
As I mulled over the events of the day and contemplated my next move, sleep found me hard and heavy. Or was it heavy and hard? Oh god, sleep found me heavy and hard. <laughs> what? Ah, very different. Very different meaning if you switch the words around. Oh. Oh, I'm already at the end of it? Sorry it took so long to get this update out. Life has been hectic and I ran into so many errors I wanted to throw my computer. If you made it this far, then everything should have worked as intended, hopefully. If not, as always, please let me know of any bugs you found. I know they're... Yeah, well, it's not going to be continued, so... Many of those errors are on my to-do list, but feel free to still report them if you like. Thanks again for playing. I hope to have updates to the game in the near future, depending on when I'm able to work on everything. Anyway, thank you for your support. I really appreciate you guys and your endless patience. That's a uh, actual shame, too. Alright, so let's uh, proceed with the other brutes, I guess. Let's... Uh, someone sleeps outside. No! You're not mine. Someone sleeps outside, okay. Would sleeping outside of the tent be a bad idea? What about the monsters you mentioned? We have ways to protect against them while being stationary here, so whomever sleeps outside won't have won't have any need to worry. Probably means magical ways, but still. Who should I suggest spend the night outside? Me. I should be the one to sleep outside. After all, I'm the stranger and it would be rude to ask either of them to stay outside. I should probably be the one to stay outside. Solace raised an eyebrow at me. Oh, why is that? Well, you just met me, and you and Mr. Jurda have been traveling together for a while. It would be rude if I tried to force one of you outside. Besides, if any monsters come, you'll let me in, right? Depends on the monster, he smiled. It didn't make me feel any better. Relax, you won't have to worry about the monsters. I appreciate you volunteering to stay out here despite the danger. It's quite admirable, but it won't be necessary. Follow me. Silas walked by me and headed toward the tent. I followed Silas to the tent. He opened the flap and stepped inside. I followed behind. Holy... Talk about bigger on the inside. How? Magic. I figured that. So the tent is just another cube that holds a house instead of a tent? Yes and no. The tent merely acts as a threshold. Think of the tent like a door. You start in one room. When you walk through the door, you're into another room. It's just that this door currently connects the woods where we were and the house here where we are. I think I get it. So the woods outside the window, there aren't, aren't, there aren't the same woods as the ones we were in. Ugh, excuse me, as the ones we were in? Correct. As you can probably tell by the green leaves, it's not fall here. Wait, are you saying the tent connected us to the other side of the world? Silas smiled. Precisely. Yep, magic is amazing. Oh, you're definitely going to have to show me more magic sometime. I look forward to it. For now, let me show you where you'll be staying for tonight. Silas led me up the stairs and down a hallway. The inside of the house was definitely big, and I had a feeling there was more to see, but Silas stopped in front of the first door on the right. He opened the door, and we stepped inside. Damn, this room is so big, and look at that bed! I don't think I've ever stayed in a room this nice before. Well, I suppose I wouldn't know that for sure. This is where you will spend the night. There's an adjoining bathing chamber through that door. Feel free to use any of the sundries in there. Oh, and there are some spare clothing items in that wardrobe over there that you can use should you like. Silas led me back out of the room. Let me back out of the room and down near to the end of the hall. We passed a couple other doors that Silas told me were mostly used for storage. Silas opened the door at the end of the hall and ushered me inside. This is my room. Should you need anything in the night, you can find me here. And that pretty much concludes the tour. Shall we get something to eat? Ugh. I could go for something to eat. It's like, no. It is. Author time. Or, coffee time. Yep. I'm just going to be doing the various pathways in this until it hits the end. That way I'll have covered everything. Snack in the carriage was, snacks in the carriage were good, but not very filling. Sure, that sounds great. Thank you, Silas. My pleasure. Silas led me back downstairs to into the dining area. Mr. Jurda was already hard at work preparing what looked to be some kind of stew as we entered the room. Ah, I see you're already preparing our meal. Thank you very much. Just doing my job, Master Teagland. Silas rolled his eyes at the title, but didn't say anything about it. Since you're already in here preparing the meal, I suppose the carriage is unloaded and horses taken care of. Indeed, sir. Very well. I shall go set up the barrier then. Marcus, would you mind assisting Mr. Jurda with the meal? Yes, I think I can do that. As tempting as the magic sounds, I think I'd rather help with dinner and maybe get to know Mr. Jurda more. I'll prepare the meal. Very well. Sounds like a plan, then. Silas laid a hand on my shoulder and pinned my gaze with a serious expression. If you burn our meal, I'll make you sleep outside and let you be eaten by whatever may happen by in the dead of night. Swallowed hard. I really hope he's joking about that. Silas smiled and walked toward the entrance. Anyway, best of luck.
Salas exited out the front door, and I caught a glimpse of the autumn woods beyond. Even knowing it's magic, it's still strange to see two completely separate places connected by just a door. I turned, and I saw a sink near the end of one of the counters, and I went over to wash my hands before handling the food. Without thinking, I turned one of the knobs on the edge of the sink and began washing my hands in the warm water after putting some soap from a dispenser on them. How did I know, that? How did I know what these were and how to operate them? Huh. Everything all right? I shook my hands and then toweled them off the nearby cloth. Yeah, it's just that I've lost my memory, but my body just knew how to wash my hands like I'd done it a thousand times. But I can't recall a single time I actually have. Ah, I see. Since you stayed to help with the meal, go, a go ahead and cut those veggies up for the stew. He gestured with the knife in his hand toward the cutting board off to the side that was surrounded by a few piles of different vegetables. I walked over and pulled a suitable chopping knife from the block on the counter. Looks like everything is peeled and washed, so all I have to do is chop them up. I grabbed the onion first and began cutting off the top off the top and bottom before proceeding to chop it into relatively small pieces. I moved to the potatoes next and diced them into bite-sized cubes then moved on to the celery and carrots, cutting them into small pieces. By the time I finished all the vegetables, Mr. Jurda had already coated the meat and spices and was browning it in the onions in the pot. Thank you. You cut these all remarkably well. Either you're lying about the, about the memory loss or you've done it enough times for your body to remember. I'm not lying. I really don't remember anything. And perhaps it's just muscle memory. Muscle memory? Like, how I can still talk and breathe without having to think about it? Sorta. Some actions are so ingrained in your muscles that your body just goes through the motions without you having to think about what to do. Looks to be at some point you prepared so many veggies that your hands just moved and cut them without you needing to think about how to hold a knife. How to dice or chop or cube, you simply did. I see, so there may be things my body remembers that my mind doesn't. Mr. Jordan grunted and gave a short nod. They offer some unsolicited advice. You ask before giving it, doesn't that make it uh, make it solicited advice? And maybe not, since I didn't ask for it. I shook my head slightly, slightly to clear the needless thoughts about unsolicited versus solicited advice. Sure. Mr. Jurda hesitated, probably trying to determine if my head if my head shake meant no, but I still said yes. Try not to think too much about it. If your body knows how to do something, trust it. The more you're trying to figure out the hows and whys, the more you'll hinder yourself from remembering. An old friend of mine lost his memory once for a day or two because he'd be drunk as a skunk. Still knew how to do his job and stuff, but you ask him what his name was or basic math and he'd freeze up. Well, I don't know. I don't know a thing. I don't think I was drunk, but who knows? Do you think my memory will come back in a couple days? So no. Thank you, by the way, for putting up with me and not telling Silas to leave me behind. Oh, yeah, we weren't really properly introduced either. I held up my hand. I'm Marcus. Mr. Jurta took my hand and shook it. Maverick Jurta. Anyway, food should be done in about an hour thirty. Why don't you go get freshened up for then? It does sound nice. I literally have no idea when the last time I bathed was. Sure. I made my way up the stairs, but glanced toward the entrance briefly. No sign of Silas yet. After I got upstairs, I headed to the room I would be staying in for the night and closed the door. I stripped down and headed into the bathroom. Damn, it's big. I guess I should have expected it to be. There you go. Coffee time. Yeah, okay. I walked over to the tub, and after some guesswork, I managed to figure out how to get the hot water going and plug the drain. While it's filling up, I should probably look for some sort of soap. Silas said there should be some, uh, some sundries here somewhere. I reached around a bit and finally found some bottles of fragrant liquids. The sides of the bottles were labeled as various bath oils. Looks like lavender, chamomile, and frankincense are my options. I gave a few of them a quick sniff before choosing. Chamomile. Uh, no. We'll do lavender. I poured a decent amount of oil into the water and then returned the bottles to where I had found them. When I returned, there were bubbles beginning to form across the water's surface. Huh. I guess soap was mixed in with the lavender oil, too. Soon the tub was filled enough, so I stopped the water and gently lowered myself into the warm water. Ah, <sighs> This feels amazing! I let myself sink a little lower. I leaned my head back against the tub and closed my eyes, letting my body relax. I get used to this. I wonder if this is something I've done before, or have always made, or I'm always made due to, made do with what I could. Did I have a luxurious life, or did I live in a slum somewhere? I suppose there's no use in trying to push myself to remember. Like Mr. Jurda said, it may be best to just let my mind and body work themselves out. I focused on my breathing and my body like Silas had shown me earlier when teaching me magic. In and out. In and out. Slow and steady. Noose. I won't. You doomed us all. I can fix this. Need to... Eight. 
You must forget. No! <laughs> I sat bolt upright in the tub, sending waves of water over the edges and onto the floor. Alright guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause that right there. So from this point on, I'm just doing the other routes. So I don't know how kind of, if there's any surprises left for us, but I'm still going to cover it. Anyway, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks. Your tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, ooh, excuse me, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.